thoughts in the last week. I'm kind of interested in hearing, you know, somebody, you're, you're obviously not from here, um, but I'm interested in hearing somebody who's so prevalent and important in our community, what your thoughts are in the last week. So to follow a question, do you know how long I've, I've been in Buffalo? How long? No, I'm, I'm asking you. I don't know. So I've been in Buffalo for, for about six years. Okay. So I, in a way, am Buffalo. I've uh, fully adapted to the community. I've, like, once you give a place, I truly think when, when you give a place more than, you know, three years up, like, of your life, like, you're, like, that's, like, that's you. So um, this, is, this is also home. So with all of the stuff that's going on, um, it hit because Buffalo isn't humongous and it's 20 minutes from everybody. So um, it, was, it, was, it was a closer um, attack than usual. So I don't know if you know how long I've been here. Um, I've been here 11 years. Right. And I'm not from here. And for me personally, it is hitting close to home because this also is home. Right. And there is no other place I'd rather be than Buffalo. And to have my neighbors, have your neighbors under attack because of the color of their skin, it blows my mind that we can even have this kind of process, this kind of thing in our community. What do you make of that, the fact that it's kind of, that's, that was the guy's target? Well, um, racism is definitely a real thing. And regardless if I play football, if I'm the president, yeah. if I'm... You, you know, the number one YouTuber or the number one TikToker, whatever the world wants. Um, I'm African American, and regardless of how much money people make, they they target us all the same. So um, I'm in the same pool as all of them, and or or we are all in the same pool, all of us, because I am one of them. And um, you know, it really sucks that people walk around, they look at people, they think what they want, and then they form, you know, planned attacks. Like, he planned this attack. Like, the demographic, he researched, he came, he plotted out his, his scene, he figured out exactly how he was going to go about it, and, and he acted on it. And, you know, we as African Americans were targeted, and this this is an attack. It's, it's, this is an attack, and this is a start of an attack that what it sounds like and what the media keeps putting out, I mean, like, it just seems like it was a start of planned attacks. And as you know, like, there's, like there was even, like, people here. Like, we had, a, a, like, a police officer, like, that was making comments, like, talking about clean up on aisle one, two, three, whatever the heck, like, like he was saying, but, like, he's a white police officer that probably has pulled me over. Like, I probably got pulled and pulled over by, it could have been him. So whether or not he was thinking, oh, this, this stupid black guy, or oh, I hate these black guys, or whatever, like, it happens er like, like every day. There's people that you probably like, like work with that put a nice, clean face on and are sitting here like, oh, this is so sad. But then deep down inside, the hate is real, so um, it just sucks, man. Like, it really does suck. Has that actually happened to you before? Has what? Racism? Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me about it. Man, well, with being an athlete, like, you go through, through, through racism on the football field and in, 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 in a locker room, shoot, off of the field. Like, I go through, through this stuff all of the time. Um, not like not really too much in Buffalo, because people like everybody like really knows like who I am, sure. wh which I'm thankful for. But when I'm not in Buffalo, it happens more until they, you know, find out who who I am, and then it all changes. Especially in in, in Florida, like when I'm in Florida, like just on an everyday errand, like people like they just put us in a category, and then when they open up, and then when they try to say something, and then they see how well I'm speaking or how, like, you know, educated and I am, and, and then they start to change, but they all have this, well, everybody has this, not they all, but everyone has, like, this perspective that they just 
see whatever they see on TV or they see whatever they want to believe and then they put us all in that in category. What's the category you think they put you in? And who's they? <laughs> they is, I mean, they can be anybody besides a black. You, like, it could be anybody, but, like, I don't want it to be, like, a, a white versus black thing. I really don't. But it sucks that in this situation, it, it, it's a white versus black thing. Mm -hmm. And that's just, like, what it is. Um, but they put us all in this in this box of beneath, like, that we are nothing. That, oh, like, they're the minor, well, that they're the superior and they're the, the great and they are the king of all kings, like all of our books, all of our, like all of our, like everything, like it's just like, they've been teaching like all this stuff that has brainwashed the world, like it really has, like and it's, and it sucks that I'm even talking about, about this stuff now, but like the world is brainwashed. Everybody is looking in their phone and, and on the TV and they are believing everything that's on the TV. Everything that every kid that's growing up is seeing is, 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 you know, white, 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 white. Everybody, there ain't nothing. Like, we don't have no, and no statues. Like, like, we don't have no Greek gods, like all this, like superheroes and like all this stuff. Like, like we have a few things, but it's just like, if everything was just on an even like playing field, like, like, let's play. So that leads me to my next question. And I kind of wanted you to talk to this a little bit. Obviously there are many people who look and I say this all the time, representation matters. I'm a member of the LGBTQ community, I'm Jewish, you know, so I always say that people look to find people like them and to find representation. Um, so I wonder for you what it's like perhaps to have young black boys or young black girls looking up to you and, and perhaps how you take that on as a role, as a role model. Well, so to, okay, well, I am somebody who has, you know, put my mind to something and has had success in some type of like, you know, I'm an NFL player. I got drafted in the second round. I have a second contract. I try to do everything right, you know, so I give young people things to look up to and in a lot of ways like motivation. And um, if the question was, how do I feel about doing that or how do I go about that? Um, <clears throat> It's literally just being present, just being there and being open and, and not putting up barriers where they can't get to me or they can't, you know, ask for help or how can I like do this? How can I like, you know, start this journey of life that I want to go on and different things like um, I'm open to helping all of my my and my young black and 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 black daughters and, and, and men and women and, and, and everybody, but I'm also, I'm also open with, with helping everybody, whites, blacks, Indians, you know, whatever, Russians, Spanish people, whatever. Like, I'm open to every source, every outlook of people, every color, every, every, everything, but I just, like, who knows, like, if that's true for Every race, like I don't think that I that I could say that for 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 every background of people. My door is fully open. I would give everybody equally chance of opportunity. Well, what would you say to someone who you know might not have the same commitment or the same dedication that you did to getting to the successful point in your life? Someone who's struggling, someone who's not really sure how to get to where you are. What would you say to them? Man, truly. Um, what, and what could I say? You have to, you have to try. You have to and really try because it's hard for a lot of people. A lot of people that don't have that, I could just go talk to Deion Dawkins or I could just walk into Channel 7 or, or, or I can, but you have to really put yourself out there. You have to be vulnerable. You have to go to places where you might not want to go or you have to research places that you don't know and just take a leap and go. And talk to people. You have to be able to talk to people in person and not just on Instagram, not just on Twitter, not just behind a cell phone. You have to literally get out and speak. Because when you're just behind a picture, 
people are going to look at you a certain way. But until you get in front of some, somebody and you can really, you know, show your personality and show your smile and show your energy and let them feel your energy of how beautiful people they are, um, I think that that's and what changes. And, you know, people just have to be able to sit down like, like how we're doing and have a conversation. Like, we're just having a, a conversation. Yeah. And you're understanding more about my bat and background of people and just from having a conversation and people won't people don't even like to take ten minutes out of their day to just, you know, hi, my name is Dion. I just wanna have a conversation. Like I like the way and that you look. Can you tell me about your journey of life and see how and that goes? Like it takes a bold person to do that. I know everybody can't do that, but that is a skill that you need to learn in this world because of the way that this world is. Um, I had heard that there were a chance that there was a chance that you might throw a birthday party for Andre McNeil's. How did you hear about that? I do. I mean, <laughs> you talked to a reporter here. Oh man. So tell me about this that. This is crazy. Yeah, I was, I mean, I wasn't trying to put it out there yet, but yeah, I am uh, planning on throwing a humongous birthday party for this kid. Um, and I mean humongous, like the biggest that I could possibly do. Um, I want to do everything in every angle to make that kid's day the best day ever, you know, because I can't um, e e like even imagine that. Like I have children and I can't even imagine like losing a mom and dad or uncle, like anybody like that's like that's taking care of you. So in such a gruesome way, no less. Exactly. Exactly. Like in a now in a historical way, like. So now let's make your birthday historical to a kid. So what's your plan? Well, uh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to tell it. Okay. So, but there is a, uh, there's a lot of surprises. Awesome. A lot of surprises that are brewing. You know, we have to do it the right way. Make sure that everything is 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 in order because I don't want to overpromise. And but there is a lot of things that are 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 just flowing. And the kid is young, so I don't want to overwhelm him. Or like you know overwhelm them, and. Well, so what led to that? What like what clicked for you and was like I gotta do this. And my brain it just goes. Um, it really goes. I have a large connection with this city. Um, everybody knows somebody, and I'm one person away from knowing somebody who's, you know, tr and tragically lost in their life. Like I have people that have reached out to me after seeing us on TV and was like, man, like that was my grandmother. Like that was my, like I grew up with this lady or, and it's just like that. Like you're one person away. It's that six degrees of separation in Buffalo. That like. It's like three. Right. It's literally like right there. So, um, but um, Jazz, she is a, a, a principal at one of the schools here. And uh, she uh, mentioned the situation and her connection like with the, the uh, kid. And because um, I have a relationship with her, um, you know, I'm all for it. And I just want to make whatever I can make happen, happen. And it just takes love. It really does, you know. Um, they probably have no idea that I'm e even thinking about them, but <laughs> I'm thinking about them, so. I'm sure that means a lot. So you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so and much. Did you just ask about Wednesday when the whole team went down there? Oh yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, so Wednesday, I mean, four Buffalo Bills, my boy, Bandit Sabers, um, Bills. And was, was there anyone else who was part of that? I mean, when you guys went down there, what was what was it like for you to be at the memorial? Um, it was breathtaking. Being at the actual and location, and and it's still like mind blowing. Um, even feeling that energy there and looking at the community, look at us there and even seeing how the community welcomed us there. Um, it was just, it was just, you know, a different feel, a different feel. Uh, Mrs. Pagula said that it was kind of important for them to come down there and kind of absorb some of that pain and some of that burden. Did that kind of, did you feel that? I felt that immediately. And I felt it when the situation happened. Like I said, I am African American and it was an, an attack. So anytime somebody of my hue is attacked or is done wrong, it strikes home. I have black children, you know? I have a black father. I have a light-skinned mother. 
you know, I'm African American. It could have been any one of us. And it strikes home. It strikes home. But things and like that, it goes on in, in this world because everybody isn't right. And, you know, um, I'm a true, like, I have a, I have a huge heart. Like, but, um, you know, a, a lot of things are in, in place to just stack brick by, by brick. Like this weekend, I have a cornhole tournament that uh, I'm selling a bunch of stuff and, <laughs> and doing a bunch of things where I could, you know, gather a bunch of money so I can give to the family so they can have something. Because, like, people don't really understand, like, like, even though that, like, it was, like, a lot of older women, yeah. a lot of older people, like, that's, that's the heartbeat of, of the families. Right, it's the matriarch. Like, like, that is the heartbeat of the families. Like, literally, like, in African-American homes, like, the grandparents take care of their kids' kids. Like, that's just what happens. Like, like, you, like you're at grand, like grandma's house 65% of the time, and you're at your house the other... 35. Like, that literally is how it goes. Like, all right, mom, I'm, I'm going to grandma's house. Like, we go to grandma's house. We go to grandpa's house. Like, like we eat their food. Like, we sit on their couch. Like, we listen to their knowledge. We are fueled by what they are, are what they have went through in this world. They're, like, they're giving us all of those gems, all those gems, all those gems. Now, for those families, that gem source is cut. And that's how, you know, this world, with getting those gems, that's how we mold ourselves from the hate that we get all day long. And for those families, like, it'll be a drastic, like, it's already, like, drastically different. And, you know, I just want, like, like want to say that, that, that they're in our prayers, like, they really are. And, and like I said, like, there's so many people have no idea um, who's thinking about them. And, and, I, and I am. Let's get to show you guys talking.